this is a suede shoe and your foot is covered at the front. Each step just felt like this. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is your girl, Sierra Hicker. And today I'm gonna to be going over shoes that I find to be really sustainable um, in my wardrobe. It's so much information out there about like sustainable brands and ways you can be sustainable with your wardrobe. And I would say that the best way that you can be sustainable with your wardrobe is to invest in pieces that aren't so trendy, that you know you can wear every fall, that are of quality and will hold up through your washes and through your just everyday wear. So I'm going to be going over shoes that I find to be really classic and shoes that I invested in because I felt like I would have them for some time. I didn't feel like they were trendy and I felt like they were of quality and could last and hold up through my hard lifestyle because y'all, I am one of those types of people. If you follow me on Instagram, y'all already know, like I wear my stuff down and also I am really hard on my stuff because I'm just a hard person in general. I'm a really clumsy, I'm that type of person that goes to the restaurant and then just drops everything. That's me. Or just trips over any and everything. That's also me. So I also keep that in mind when I am purchasing shoes. So if I say that they are good and you know, durable and practical and sturdy, you best believe they are because y'all, your girl is hard. The first little shoe that I wanted to get into, which is the shoe that I have had the longest out of the three pairs that I'm gonna be showing you guys. And that is my Rick Owens Tractor Bits. I'll link up my review and like unboxing. I think I did, yeah, I think it was unboxing up here in the cards. But I got these baby, I, I think about like six months ago. I didn't have a boot for the fall and I just wanted like a Chelsea style boot because I feel like Chelsea style boots have been around for ages. And it's just a classic silhouette that again, I don't feel like will go out of style. And I chose to go with the leather version because I just really like the way leather looks beat up, especially this like thick, sturdy calf leather. I just feel like the more beat up it, it gets, the better it looks. I think it also comes in like a matte black finish, which if I didn't get these, I probably would have gotten those. But I do feel like the leather is more versatile in my wardrobe because really since they're leather, I feel like you can dress them up and also of course dress, dress them down because it's a big chunky boot at the end of the day. And one memory that sits out to me about these boots when I first started wearing them out is they were extremely like heavy. Also the first day that I wore them, I remember I was just like with my friend and we were just like shopping around the city and mostly walking to these shops. So I just felt like I was literally like this with the boot job. Like each step just felt like this. <laughs> I started to think like, is this really a city boot? I would say through wear, I'm like, let me just see if I can get used to it. So I started wearing it more often. This was my winter boot for God's sake. So I was wearing the heck out of it. And I would say through wearing it a couple times, you get used to the chunkiness of the boots and it just becomes like a part of you, I wanna say. And in terms of how this boot held up through the winter, I went to Chicago, which is where I'm from. And if you know anything about Chicago, you know that it snows a lot in the freaking winter and it's so cold. And I wore these and I was slipping and sliding everywhere throughout the, the, the city walking because this sole, as you can see, is not really any grip on the back. So if you're thinking this for a winter, snowy winter boot, I would say maybe go look at another boot because this one you're gonna be slipping and sliding. One thing I would say about this boot, which I love and really speaks to the quality of this boot, is the fact that it has not stretched much at all when it comes to like the leather and the way that it just feels around my foot. Because as I told you guys, this is a chunky boot, so I feel like you want it to be snug around your, you know, foot or you're just clenching at the top of your, you know, like y'all know what I'm talking about. You, your feet are just clenching, holding on to this big chunky boot, and it's just really uncomfortable because you really lug in. And then in terms of sizing, I got these in a 38. I am typically a size 39, but I wanted these to be snug. I knew that it was a boot and boots typically run larger. So I knew that the 38 would fit me perfectly and it absolutely does. I mean, where it stretched the most or not even the most, it, cause it only stretched a little bit, but of course it's gonna stretch where I'm bending my foot, which is here in this crease. And I think when I first got them, it was hurting a bit here at the front of the toe, but with wear, through wearing them, of course it's leather, so it's gonna give a little bit. And then when it comes to like cons with this boot, again, like I said, that it's heavy, but also the sole, again, I'm really hard on my shoe. And y'all, as y'all can see right here, it's kind of like, 
you can see like the wear there like you can see the foam you know it's starting to deteriorate which that's going to happen because this is a rubber sole i would prefer a boot with a leather sole or just something that could be resold i guess my life expectancy for this boot is i would say a good 10 years i would give it 10 years because it's a real hard freaking boot and my favorite thing to wear with my tractor boots i would say is like a little slip dress in the spring and summer and then in the fall i love to wear them with like anything just straight or boxy it's in terms of like pants or jeans i think it looks really like cool and just like hardcore i actually have a video styling chelsea boots if you need inspiration there, I'll link it up in the cards. Next little sustainable shoe we're gonna get into are my Margiela Replicas. I've talked about these so much on my channel, but I haven't yet given you guys a review. Um, I got these, I think about like four months ago now. And again, if you follow me on Instagram, y'all already know I wear the heck out of these. I literally treat them as slippers. So I got these babies to wear definitely in the spring and summer. Obviously with little slip dresses, it's a must. It looks so chic. The first thing that I want to say about these shoes actually is they come like this. I did not cut these off. I bought them like this. This is the Margiela replica cut off, which by the way, the little foam does come out through wear if you as hard as me on your shoe. And with me being hard on this shoe, y'all, when I tell y'all I am like literally running to the bus in these, climbing in these, doing my everyday errand in, errands in these. I wear this shoe so much. Um, again, I've had them for about four months. The thickness of the sole is just like so comfortable and you can just tell that, again, it's just not gonna break down. It's just a well-made shoe. And then when it comes to like any cons with this shoe, I will say that this is a suede shoe and your foot is covered at the front. Now, I don't know about you, but some people, you know, feet sweat and my feet kind of sweat and it kind of has a smell to it, I'm not gonna lie, but I kind of like that smell. I guess I'm kind of weird, like, I kind of like it. If your feet tend to smell in like a regular full shoe, I will say with a half a shoe, it's gonna smell like you wearing a full shoe with no socks on, so. Yeah, I would keep that in mind with these bad boys. Unless you plan to wear them with socks, then obviously it won't smell, but no sock may smell. But yeah, I feel like that's like one of the only cons that I have about this shoe. Um, in terms of sizing, I did my normal size, which is a size 39. You definitely want to do your true to size, or if not, maybe a half size bigger if you want a little space at the end. But yeah, I would say that this shoe has definitely held up and is it worth $500? I wouldn't pay $500 for it. I got these bad boys half off. I would definitely say, see if you can get them on sale because at the end of the day, it's half of the shoe, $600. I mean, is it worth it in terms of the quality? If you got it, yes. But if you ain't got it, don't go out and spend $600 on the shoe. Get it on sale. You definitely get it on sale at some point. Last but not least, I wanted to briefly go over my BV Mules by Bottega Veneta. And I've had these for, I think, three or four months. I got them at the beginning of summer. I used to be a person that used to love to wear heels all the time. And I still like wearing heels. Like, I love the way you walk when you wear heels and feel when you wear heels. Like, it just brings a certain... For me anyway, it just brings a little spice in this out. And uh, I was missing that little spice in my life, so I wanted to invest in a heel again, and I chose to go with this little mule. And mainly because I felt like it is a shoe that could work all year round. I have a whole review talking about what I love about them, but in terms of what I think about them three, four months in, I would definitely say that they are still very freaking comfortable. My only thing is I wish I would have done a 39. I now know that I am true to size when it comes to their shoes because I, when I wear them, I do feel like my heel is just there and I could have definitely have done a 39. I said that in the video before. And when it comes to walking in them, because I am like a hard person, as I told you guys, I kind of find that this heel is very easy to just you know kind of tip over in and i do do that and when i do that i'm like sierra slow down because i'm also a fast walker so i would say if you're looking for a little, good little heel that you can go out in and feel comfortable standing in for two to four hours however long you're going to be out 
this is a good shoe to invest in. I would say the shoemakers at Bottega are very thoughtful when it comes to the person wearing the shoe because I've yet to try on any of their shoes that aren't comfortable. My favorite thing to wear with these, I would say, is like long pants and probably little shorts. I haven't had them that long, so I don't know what looks I'm gonna be busting this fall in them, but I'm definitely looking forward to wearing them with my long wide leg pants and maybe chunky knits. This thing is gonna be a total freaking vibe. I hope this inspired you guys to just really be thoughtful when it comes to the investment pieces that you choose to incorporate into your wardrobe. And just really think like, am I gonna wear this? Is this a trendy thing or is this a timeless thing that will stay in my wardrobe, basically? And if that is the answer to it, then it's something that, you know, you should invest in. I feel like that's rule of thumb. But I just feel like shoes are just really good to invest in. For one, you don't want to have like back problems in the future, especially if you have a job where you're like standing up or even sitting down, like you just want good support on your feet. Like, that is enough timeless, sustainable talk for today. If you enjoyed this video, if you took anything away from this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and also leave a comment down below because when you do that it tells you to that oh my god people are chattering people are liking let's suggest this to someone else if you find it helpful found it helpful then someone else probably will too so yeah thank you guys so much for watching i will see you in my next video